Hello everyone, Kevin Stevenson here with GetMeTheGeek.com and today we're going to talk about Rocky Linux and we're going to install Microsoft SQL Server on Rocky Linux 8.4. So let's get started. All right, here we go. I have a Rocky Linux installation that I am SSH'd into already here. And then I have the Microsoft documentation for installing SQL Server on Red Hat. And that should uh, work just the same as if you were using uh, Red Hat for Rocky Linux. So we'll get down here and 8.4 is what we're going to use for Rocky Linux. And so that should be just fine. Just go down here and <clears throat> first things first is we have to set up Python. So we're going to take and copy this over to here. And see what it says. And so no Python installed. So basically what we need to do is install Python 2. And if you read this, basically it says that Python 2 is um, not installed on Red Hat by default and that it needs it for SQL Server. So we're going to do this. Right there, it says Rocky Linux 8.4. Go ahead and say yes to this. Yes. All right, that's installed. Let's go ahead and clear it. And uh, go ahead and take out our next command. Open SSL. Go ahead and say yes to that. And then, as soon as this gets done installing, we're going to check to see if Python is installed now. And clear. So you see it, Python. Boom, right there, Python 2. Okay. So, moving on down, we want to go ahead and get the Microsoft repo for SQL Server. So we want to choose Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 version. So we're going to copy that line, paste it in here, and boom. And now we're going to actually install SQL Server. So let's do that. And there we go. We're installing SQL Server on Rocky Linux 8.4 now. If you're getting value out of this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. All right, there we have it. It is installed. So next thing we need to do is set it up. Let me go ahead and clear this out so we get more screen space. Copy this setup command and boom. Now, here's where you need to make a decision. If you're using this as a development, you can choose number two. If you're just using the express free version, you can choose number three. If you have a, a SQL Server license, you can choose the appropriate license you have. In this particular case, we're gonna choose three because this is gonna be an express install and I'm gonna use it for other tutorials. There we go. And then you have to accept the license. And then you need to come up with SQL Server password. Remember that your SQL Server passwords have to be a minimum of eight characters, including uppercase, lowercase, and digits, or non-alphanumeric. Alphanumeric. It's in here in this note, which I will scroll up a little bit. This note right here. Okay, so we're going to do that. There we go. Now we are configuring SQL Server. Boom, boom, boom. All right. So she's installed. Let's check to see if she is up and running. And there we go. Active running. Yes, you are running. SQL Server now. Now, just so you know, there is a couple more things we need to do to get things up and running. Now, first of all, if you plan on accessing your SQL Server from remote PC, then you're gonna have to open up the firewall for the TCP port 1433. And here is the commands to do that. We're just gonna copy those right in there. But basically, all it is is setting up uh, 14, 
43 as a uh, public open port, and then it reloads to fire all rules so that everything's up and working. Now, command line tools. This is going to be super important for you if you're not running a Microsoft Windows machine somewhere on your network that you can connect this. If you're running a, if you're running a Windows machine, you can install the SQL Server Management Studio, and you can do a whole bunch of fun stuff that way. But we're going to install the command line tools in order so you can do the basics or really everything you need to do from the command line. So when you again, when you choose the the Red Hat Linux 8 version, we're going to copy that down here. It's going to go and it's going to curl to get that repo. And now we have the if you have installed Linux, the Microsoft SQL Server tools previously from an old older packages, you want to remove. So we're going to this doesn't have them, but I'm going to go ahead and throw that command in there anyway. It's going to just remove them if they were there. And in this case, there's no match. Okay. So now, now that we've verified that they're not installed, we're going to go ahead and install them. All right. Boom, boom, boom. So while that's installing, we'll talk about this next command. So in here, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and set up the path so that when you want to type your SQL Server commands that you don't have to go ahead and put the fully qualified path in there. Uh, this will make your life easy, easier uh, when you're working on stuff. Accept your licensor. All right. There we have it. Now let's go ahead and fix this bash RC file. And then everything is good. Now, now you have your SQL Server up and running and you can do what you need to do with SQL Server. Here we're going to go in and take a look at this right here. And this is going to connect to our SQL Server via command line. If you're used to using MySQL, this is going to look very similar to any, any tutorial you've had with MySQL on Linux where you've installed MySQL and then you go ahead and you log into it with a command line. Here is my super secure password. And boom, see that I am in SQL Server. So if you look at this, there's a couple other things here. Uh, it tells you about how to connect to it remotely. So if you have the SQL Server tools installed on another Linux box, it allows you to connect to it remotely. And instead of a local host, you'll use the IP address or the fully qualified domain. So going and creating and querying data. So let's create a new database. We're just going to follow this tutorial right up here. We a test DB. All right. Now, there you have that. And now, next command. All right. Query return the name of all databases in the servers. Okay. So, and now the final command is go. I'm going to put that in there. And then what it's going to do, as soon as you hit go, it's going to do the first step task and then the second one boom so created the test db and then it listed the databases and you'll see that uh, test db is one of the ones there all right let's go ahead and insert a little bit of data in here right so we're going to go copy using the test db now remember this is microsoft tutorial so you can go directly to the microsoft docs and and copy these things directly from there all right so here we are we're going to create an inventory table with these columns. Boom. And now we're going to insert the values one for the ID, banana for the name, and 150 for the quantity. And I'm also going to insert two for an ID, orange for the name, and 154 for the quantity. All right. So let's go ahead and paste that over here. Hit enter. Now, None of these things have happened yet until we do this go command. All right. So let's hit go and boom. Now, change one row is affected, run row is affected. Basically, it inserted two rows. Spectacular. Now, let's do a simple query on this, right? Oops. Forgot that I'm not in bash. <laughs> so, okay. So we're going to do this. We're going to query from the inventory table with where the quantities are greater than 152. Okay, boom. 
Now we're going to hit go. And boom. The reason why that is there is that clear. <laughs> and, and so because I, I would try to clear out the, the, uh, the, so you could read it easier. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, let's find values that are greater than 152. And there we go, oranges. Now, I went ahead and cleared out the data, cleared, because I had had some typo mistakes, so I just exited out, clear, cleared my screen, and went back in. All right, so, and then if you want to exit, you hit quit. So you just type in quit, boom, you're out. All right, so then it puts you back into bash command. Now, if you have further information you'd like to know, there's this cross-platform data tools that you can look at right here. Visual Studio Code. So if you're running Linux and you're running a GUI Linux, you can install Visual Studio Code and the plugins for Microsoft SQL Server extension in there and do many, many, many things you want. Also, you could install PowerShell Core. There you have it. That's installing Microsoft SQL Server 2019 Rocky Linux 8.4. Very much exactly the same way you would do it on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 or CentOS 8. So Rocky Linux, looking good, looking compatible with Red Hat. Excellent choice for your next SQL Server install. I'm Kevin Stevenson with GetMeTheGeek.com. If you got something out of this video, please like and share this. And if you would like to uh, support me directly, I have a Buy Me A Coffee link in the description and check that out i appreciate anything that you do for me and i'll see you next week let's have some fun